Hello everyone, welcome back to this uh, YouTube channel. So today the chain of responsibility design pattern. So this pattern allows you to stack up operation nicely one after another. So to do so you will create handlers, a bunch of handlers and specify which uh, handler is invoked after another one and so on and so on and so on. So this will form a chain as the name of the pattern suggests. So um, I'll show you an example in Go and then as usual we will discuss pros and cons um, at the end of the video. As always, if you enjoy this kind of content, uh, like and subscribe to support the channel and uh, I hope you will learn something useful today. Enjoy! Alright, so we have our main uh, program there. So we will define an interface called handler. So the first method is going to be handle, which is going to take a request. So we can define that request as a struct with nothing for now. And then we can define a second method called set next handler. And this method will take a handler. So the same interface that we just created. Um, so we're just gonna put a command here, interface and model. And then here we can put our first uh, handler implementation. So for that we need a struct, so we can, um, for that example, we can create a multiplayer handler. So id shortcut, I will implement uh, the handler interface we just created. So the handle method, so uh, for instance, we can put a number in the request and just multiply it by two, for instance. So let's just create a number, a field called number, which is an int in the request. So then when it's receiving a request, we can create a result as another request, but inside the body just multiply the number of the request by two, for instance. And then we can just log the result just to see that it indeed happens like that. Uh, so we can simply test that. Uh, you know, I, I like to test thing really step by step. So here I'm just defining a multiply handler M and then um, we need a request. So R is a request and the number is two. So if we're sending R to uh, the handle method and we run that, we should display two by two. It should be four, there you go. So it's working as intended and then uh, we will implement that set next handler so to set it you need to remember what is the next handler so we will provide a field called next handler and it will be a pointer handler so then it can remember it so when we will invoke the set next handler we will simply just assign the handler from the argument to that next handler field from the handler right and then going back to the first implementation of the handle method if the next handler field is not uh, null then we can simply invoke the handle method so because uh, we do know that this is a handler we can we know for sure that it will have that method called handle so then we can simply pass the result, which is a request. So then you can chain the request. So if you run that code, nothing happens because we haven't uh, declared any um, next handler on the multiply handler we just created. So um, let's just create another multiply handler and let's define the chain. So the next handler for m is m2 so if we run that it still doesn't display 8 we're expecting 8 2 by 2 and then 2 by 2 again so that's because um, 
it's uh, it's not a receiver method, so we are not actually altering the strike multiplier handler. So we need to change the um, uh, uh, the um, the type of method on line thirty and thirty nine. So um, so then, if I change that by adding a wildcard and then um, rerunning that um, method so it's compiling and then running it there you go so it's now calling m2 so m1 is invoked first and then returning 4 and then it's sending uh, 4 to m2 which is multiply 4 by 2 which is 8 so all working as intended so just for the sake of uh, the example, let's create another handler called addition handler. So it's very similar to um, the multiply handler, but we will just uh, add a certain number to the number it's receiving. So you can see here, um, it's going to take the request.number and then add it 10 and creating another request we can print it just to uh, make sure it works when we're gonna execute the program and then exactly the same as uh, the other one if there's a next handler available we will execute the handle method of that um, handler and uh, set next uh, set next handler method is exactly the same as uh, the multiply one. All right. So here we can define uh, addition handler, and we can chain M two. So M one, M chain M two, and then M two can chain um, A. So then you can see. 18 there. So all work as intended. Alright, so as you saw, it's a relatively simple uh, pattern. Um, quite powerful because you give a chance to uh, each handler to uh, execute their content and you can decouple quite easily your operation. So um, uh, just a little quick discussion on pros and cons. So pros so each handler can be tested in isolation so from the point of view of a handler it's just receiving a request so it's extremely easy to just test that and not taking into account other handlers so that's really good it's quite uh, highly composable because you can chain itself you can modify a parameter you can have quite a long chain so it's um, and it, you can even do that at runtime as in if you receive a request and then if um, the request has a certain content you can decide to set the next handler to A or otherwise to B and so on and so on so extremely powerful so for the counts um, it might be if, if it's easy to test your handler in isolation, it might be tricky to test all the possible workflow. If you are working on something like authentication or authorization, it's quite good because you're going to send your request on each component. But because it's quite sensitive, you might want some end-to-end -end tests or some integration tests, and that might be tricky to test. But um, you can make it. And then um, lastly, um, you saw that the handler interface has a very specific signature. So in my example, uh, the handle interface is just handle a request and then not returning anything. But that's very limiting because um, often you will have operation like I operation or HTTP calling operations and you want to check the error or completely stop the operation if you have an error. So probably your signature will be slightly different, but it needs to be thought uh, beforehand, as in probably the best signature would be an interface and then returning back an interface and an error to be 
uh, high, more scalable in a way. So keep that in mind if you decide to implement that pattern. All right, hope you enjoyed that uh, very simple and efficient design pattern, the change, chain of responsibility. It's also called CORE, uh, it's abbreviation, if you hear that. Um, definitely a must for your interviews for um, some of you is going through interviews at the moment so it's good to know it hope you learned something I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll say to you uh, see you next week and happy coding bye